Okay, in order for you to do differential equations, you must know how to do integrals. And one good place for you guys to learn more is our sponsor today. Brilliant. We are currently looking at the integral calculus course. Here, they cover all the integration techniques that you have to know, such as integration by parts and different kinds of substitutions. Taking a course from Brilliant is really fun because they will keep you engaged by storytelling and cool animations. Over the past year, they have built a whole new platform for their courses that takes interactivity to the next level. You will see hands-on activities while you go through their courses, and especially they have over 60 interactive courses in math and science, and they range from beginning level to advanced level. So you will be able to find courses that you like and you can start learning something new. And I have a special link for you guys, brilliant.org slash blackpenredpen. If you use the link, you will have a 20% off discount. So go ahead and check them out, and I want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now, let's get started with question number one. For the first one, we have a separable differential equation because we can just put the y minus 1 squared to the other side and then multiply the dx to here. So we are going to get 1 over y minus 1 squared in the y world, and this is equal to 1 over 1 minus cosine squared x in the x world. As we can see, we have all the y's on one side and all the x's on one side. And when we have this, we can just go ahead and integrate both sides. And to integrate this, we can just do it yourself. Let u equal to y minus 1, and differentiate both sides, we get du is equal to dy. So we just have to integrate 1 over u squared, which is the same as u to the negative 2, in the u world. And we can use the reverse power rule for this, add 1 to the power, and divide it by the new power, so we get negative 1 u to the negative 1 power is the same as 1 over u, and we know u is equal to y minus 1. So that's the left hand side. You don't have to put on a plus c because technically we have integrals on both sides. We have the constants on both sides, but we can move the constant just to the right hand side. Okay, here, how do we integrate this? The truth is 1 minus cosine square x is just nicely equal to sine square x on the bottom. And what's 1 over sine square x? Cosecant square x. So we just had to think about the derivative of what function will give us cosecant square x. Is the answer just cotangent x? Well, now, because the derivative of this is going to give us negative, therefore, we have to have a negative right here. So on the left-hand side, we get negative cotangent x. And now, let's go ahead and put down plus c. And because I want to isolate the y for you guys, so we can see the general solution, let's keep track of the constant. So let's call that to be c1. Now to continue, I will just multiply both sides by negative 1. So we have positive 1 over y minus 1 equals positive cotangent x. c1 is a constant. Negative c1 is also a constant. Let's call that c2. Yay. And now let's flip both sides. So we get y minus 1, but let's put a minus 1 to the other side. So we get y equals 1 plus the reciprocal of the entire right hand side. So we get 1 over cotangent x plus c. This is it because we got the y by itself, so I don't need to write down the index anymore. That's the general solution. Now, to use this initial condition, we can be able to solve for c. We know y of pi over 4 is equal to 2. This means put pi over 4 into this x, so we get 1 plus 1 over cotangent pi over 4 plus c. Subtract 1 both sides, and then cotangent pi over 4 is 1 plus c. And the only way for this to be 1 is when c is equal to 0. So c is equal to 0. Then there we have it. We don't have this, so we have the answer is y equals 1 plus 1 over cotangent x. And of course, that's the same as tangent x. And we are done. And now for the second one, notice that we have dy dx is equal to y squared minus 2y plus 2. This expression does not depend on x, namely the independent variable, sometimes t. This is a special case called the autonomous differential equation. It's really cool. And here's the thing. The best part is that this is also separable. So let's just go ahead and divide this on both sides and then multiply dx on both sides. We have 1 over y squared minus 2y plus 2 
in the y world and this is equal to dx and just go ahead and integrate both sides like what we did earlier how do we deal with this though can we factor it unfortunately not with real numbers so we will have to complete the square so here y squared minus 2y leave a space and then plus 2 this is 1 already i will take half of this which is negative 1 and square that i will get positive 1 but don't forget to minus 1 here and we see these three terms give us a perfect square y minus 1 square and this is of course just plus 1 so therefore on the bottom here this is just nicely equal to 1 over y minus 1 square plus 1 and let's not integrate anything yet so I'll just still put down the integral of dx to integrate this do a u sub let u equal to y minus 1 du is the same as dy so we just need to integrate 1 over u square in u square plus 1 in the u world and that will give us inverse tangent yay so here we have inverse tangent of u which is y minus 1 on the right hand side we have the integral of 1 in the x world so we get x and now put a plus c so get y equals 1 plus the inverse tangent well here becomes the original tangent of this which is x plus c and that's the what's that called general solution all right, but I have an initial condition right here for you guys. I changed the initial condition from the paper because this way the question look more different. But you know what the answer should be already, but I will still show you guys. So anyway, y of zero is equal to one, meaning we get one plus tangent of zero plus c, and this is zero equals tangent of c, so c has to be equal to zero, and that's nothing there. So the answer, you know it, it's going to be 1 plus tangent x. Done. And now this one is actually very different than the previous two because this is not separable. Have a look. We have dy dx minus tangent x and then multiply by y. So the y is not itself the tangent. And then this is equal to 1 minus tangent x. This is called the first order because we have the first derivative linear because all the derivatives and also the y's are of the first power first order linear differential equation and the way that we're going to handle this is that we'll use the so-called integrating factor i have a video on that already you guys can go ahead and check that out so i will write that down for you guys though so what it is we must have the equation in the standard form namely dy dx plus some function in terms of x so let's call that p of x and then multiply by y and anything else in terms of just x it will be on the right hand side so notice that this right here does not have the y so it fits this category now the integrating factor abbreviated as if if this is this easy no no no, no, no. integrating factor usually we use this mu as a notation all right so mu of x ready mu of x is equal to e for the base yeah like most of the time and then the power here it's actually the integral integral what p of x yes so let's go ahead and figure what mu of x is in our situation of course you have to be careful though this is our p of x it is negative tangent x so when we have mu of x we will have to do the integral here and that's negative tangent x dx well this is just e and the negative is still negative and the integral of tangent x is ln absolute value of secant x and you don't need a plus c here because if you do put plus c that becomes a coefficient here and later on we'll multiply this integrating factor throughout this differential equation so if you have like a c or whatever here they tell you and divide everybody by that special constant so it doesn't matter we can almost cancel out the e and ln but we have a negative here spotting us let's put a negative to here becomes the negative one power so this is 
e to the ln absolute value of 1 over secant x like this. Like 1 over, this is not going to be the negative 1 here as the inverse. All right. Now we can cancel out e and ln, and we have this absolute value spotting us. Well, to take out the absolute value, of course, we consider the plus or minus. And of course, 1 over secant x is the same as cosine x. What do we do? The positive version or the negative version doesn't matter. Imagine if you choose a negative cosine, you multiply everybody by negative cosine. Guess what? We can then divide everybody by negative. So let's not do that. So let's just use, let's just use mu of x for cosine x, just a positive version. So how it works is that if we look at this original differential equation again, dy dx minus for tangent, because we have to multiply by cosine, let's go ahead and just write this as sine x over cosine x and then multiply by y. That's equal to 1 minus, again, tangent is sine x over cosine x. Now we look at this, then multiply everybody by the integrating factor, which is cosine x. So the left hand side will give us cosine x times dy dx. And this and that is just cancel out. So we have minus sine x times y. And let me put parentheses because y is not inside of the sign. And then cosine x here. And lastly, we have the minus sine x. Cool. And now what though? You know, this is so cool about the integrating factor. Because the left hand side, it's actually a derivative. Derivative of what? Check this out. It's the derivative of cosine x times y. You don't trust me? Have a look. How do you differentiate cosine x times y with respect to x? Y is a function of x. We will have to use the product rule. Check this out. First one times the derivative second, namely dy dx. And then we add, don't worry, we add the second function times the derivative of the first. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. See? So the left hand side is actually just the derivative of cosine x times y. And then the right hand side, we have cosine x minus sine x. What do we do next though? Well, when we solve differential equation, yeah, even though we integrate it already, but let's integrate it again. Because if we integrate this, integral and derivative will cancel, right? And we'll be in the x world. So integrate both sides. On the left hand side, there's nothing to do. Just write down cosine x times y. And this is equal to the derivative. The integral of cosine x is positive sine x. And the integral of negative sine x is positive cosine x. Yeah. And then plus c. Yeah. All right. Now, I will divide everybody by cosine x. So we can get the y by itself. And ladies and gentlemen, we get a general solution. y is equal to, OK, this is tangent x plus 1. And this right here is plus c times 1 over cosine x, of course, is cosecant x. So notice that this is very interesting because when we have this differential equation, this right here is the general solution. We do have this extra, huh? Well, the reason I say it is because, yes, I'm going to show you with this right here. I made it in the way that <laughs> everything in this video is just 1 plus tangent x. You guys should know that already. So y is equal to 0 when x is equal to negative pi over 4. So I'll just put it right here. We have tangent of negative pi over 4 and then plus 1 plus c times sine, I mean secant of negative pi over 4. All right, this right here is negative 1 plus 1. They will be 0. So you see we have 0 is equal to c times secant of negative pi over 4. Just to impress you guys, I remember the answer for this, which is 1 over square root of 2. Anyway, 
c has to be equal to zero. Of course, you know it. So, ladies and gentlemen, wow. I'm so excited for this right here because I didn't expect that I was able to come up with six differential equations that you all have the same answer. Y equals 1 plus tangent x. Now this one looks a little bit more bizarre because the left hand side, it looks like a first water linear differential equation. But we have this equal to y squared, so this is not first water linear differential equation. In fact, this is an example of a Bernoulli's differential equation. And let me write down the general form for you guys. We have dy dx plus some function in terms of just x times y, and this is equal to some function in terms of x. But here we multiply by y to the r's power, and r can be any real number. So in our situation here, q of x is equal to 1, which is OK, and r is equal to 2. OK? And how do we solve this though? Well, I will tell you. We will first do a substitution and we usually let b be our new variable and the substitution is y to the 1 minus r's power with this substitution we will be able to take this Bernoulli's differential equation from the x y world to the x v world and in that world it will become a first quarter linear differential equation and then we'll do the things that we did earlier yeah so let's go and do it so just trust this differential equation, you'll see that it works out so, so, so nicely. V equals, in our situation, we have y, 1 minus 2, so we have negative 1. Take a look right here, and then we differentiate both sides with respect to x. So we see, we have dv dx, that's equal to put the negative 1 to the front, and then minus 1, and then because y is a function of x, we multiply by dy dx. And now, this is how I will recommend you guys to do it. I'm going to write this down one more time. So we have dy dx plus 2 sine x over sine x plus cosine x y. And this is equal to y squared. What we will do is, let's multiply everybody by whatever this coefficient is. Namely, negative y is negative 2 power. Because when we multiply this right here, you see, we get dv dx right away. So that's how I like to do the change. And it will always be like this, very nicely. So first we will have dv dx, so let's go ahead and write that down. Then negative times that, this part stays, so we have negative 2 sine x over sine x plus cosine x. Now y to the negative 2 times y to the first power, we get y to the negative 1. But of course, if you look back, y to the negative 1 is v, so we can put that down right here. And lastly, this is equal to negative 1, yeah, because y to a negative 2 times that is just negative 1. Ladies and gentlemen, have a look. Differential equation, <laughs> that's linear first order in the x, v world. So yeah integrating factor and the most important part is this part we have to integrate that so let's focus on this right here so this is our little goal we have to look at the integral of negative 2 sine x over sine x plus cosine x and i'm going to show you guys my favorite technique of integration called the wouldn't be nice let me show you if you have seen my one two three four integral you know what i'm talking about but here's the deal wouldn't it be nice, since the denominator is already sine x plus cosine x, what can we really do on the top to make this integral super easy? Please do not say put a zero here, don't do that. But the next easiest one is of course, what if we have the same exact thing, namely sine x plus cosine x. I know this is super redundant, but it works. Because this right here is just integral of 1 in the x world, so we'll just get x. Well, it's there, not integral, that's also super easy. Yes, because when we have the denominator being sine x plus cosine x, wouldn't it be so nice if the numerator is exactly the derivative of the denominator? Namely, cosine x here, and then the derivative of that, which is negative sine x. Because if this is a situation, then we can just do a use up 
let u equal to the bottom, and we'll end up with ln of the bottom, because the derivative is on the top already. So we have ln of the bottom, which is sine x plus cosine x in the absolute volume. Now, is it possible for us to somehow combine this and that to produce negative 2 sine x? They have the same denominator already. Our goal is to think about multiply this by some number and add it with multiply by some number to produce that. This is called a linear combination. Let's see. If we simply just add these equations, well, integrals, technically, yeah, equation integrals, sine x, sine x will cancel. No, I don't want that. I want the sine x to stay. So what if I cancel the cosine? If I put negative here, then cosine, cosine will cancel. Sine x plus sine x is 2. No, I want negative. So in fact, I will have to put negative here, meaning we multiply by negative throughout this equation. So this right here should also be negative. And notice that I didn't put on the plus C because it doesn't matter for this little part. And if you look at this, because they have the same denominator, cosine x and cosine x will cancel. Negative sine x minus another sine x, we get this. So when we combine these two equations, the left hand side does give us the integral of negative 2 sine x over the same denominator because integration is linear operation. So you can just add inside. Very nice. So this right here becomes negative x plus ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x. So that's how you can integrate this. Cool. But this is not it. For the integrating factor, I'll put on the if. We will have to do e to this power, e to that power, right? So here, the integrating factor is actually going to be mu of x, which is this part. That's going to be e to this power, which is e to this. And because we are adding the powers, so we can say multiply by e to this power, which is ln absolute value of sine x plus cosine x. And we see e and ln cancel. And just like our discussion earlier, the absolute value doesn't matter. Just take the positive version of that. So we're just going to say we will use our integrating factor being e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x. Whew. So I'm just going to multiply everybody by e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x. Before we continue, you should still believe that the answer to the differential equation is 1 plus tangent x. But anyway, first take this, multiply by that, we still have that e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x. And then we have that dv dx. Very good. This times that, this and that will cancel, and we have a minus 2 e to the negative x and then that sine x factor and then times v and lastly we have negative 1 times this e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x and now let me tell you guys how cool a first order linear differential equation is the left hand side it's always going to be the derivative of the integrating factor namely that part e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x times v, right, because we are using v for our variable here, guaranteed. And this right here is equal to our negative e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x. And of course, integrate both sides. Left hand side super cool because this and that cancel. But what exactly is this though? When you see e to the whatever times sine integration by parts, huh? But no, I will show you guys how we can deal with this very nicely. Have a look. The, when we have the integral of negative e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x, this is actually super nice. We can actually just look at a u sub. Let u equal to negative x, then we see du is equal to negative dx. So we have this negative dx here. So we can take this into the u world. It becomes the integral e to the u times sine. Well, x is going to be negative u. 
and then plus cosine of negative u in the u world. So that's so good. Furthermore, because sine is an odd function, we can actually put a negative to the front, and because cosine is an even function, this negative doesn't matter. So in fact, we're just looking at the integral of e to the u times negative sine of u plus cosine of u. This is actually so nice. Because we're integrating u to the e to the u's power times the function plus its derivative. What's the function though? Cosine x. Well, u in here. So in fact, this right here, you can just look at it and then you can just put down this is e to the u times cosine u. It's pretty much the same idea here. Check this out. If you differentiate this, you get you keep the first function, which is e to the u, times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine u, plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which is e to the u. So again, this is the result of the product rule for these two functions. So finally, we can see that the answer for this integral is just e to the negative x cosine of negative x. But again, the negative inside of the cosine doesn't matter, so it's just e to the negative x cosine x. So that would be the right hand side. We have e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x. And then we have this v. v is just y to the negative 1. So let's write that down. And then on the right hand side, we saw that it was equal to this. So this is equal to e to the negative x times cosine x. And right here, right now, let's go ahead and put on the plus c. We're almost done. I'm going to divide both sides by y to the negative 1, so it becomes y to the positive 1, but I'll write that down first. So we have y to the positive 1. And I'm going to divide this to the other side, and then I'll write that down. So we have e to the negative x times sine x plus cosine x over this guys. So e to the negative x times cosine x plus c. Unfortunately, we cannot cancel this and that out yet. But don't worry, we have this initial condition. y of 0 is equal to 1. So 1 is for y, and then e to the negative 0 times sine of 0 plus cosine of 0 over e to the negative 0 times cosine of 0 plus c. This is 1, this is 0, this is 1. So we have 1 equals 1 over this is 1, this is 1, plus c. So c is again equal to 0. So meaning we don't have that. And now we can cancel this and that. So finally, I'm just going to do this in your head. Eh? We can c is 0. Cancel this, let's just say c is equal to 0. Yeah? C is equal to 0. And this and that cancel out. Okay? And then split the fraction. What's this? tangent x. What's that? 1. Ladies and gentlemen, y is equal to 1 plus tangent x. Okay, what is this? Don't worry, this is just an exact differential equation. And I know this is exactly a differential equation, but this differential equation is called exact. So what makes this exact? Let me tell you. This form right here is actually from the total differential of some function with two variables. Let's call it capital F of x comma y, and let's say this is equal to some constant c. When we have this right here, we can do the so-called total differential. And to make that happen, we do the partial derivative with capital F with respect to x, and then multiply by dx. And then we add it with the partial of f with respect to y and multiply by dy. And of course, if you just differentiate this, then you get 0. But this is the main part. You see? Something dx, something dy. But we have to make sure that this is indeed came from a total derivative or a total differential of some function. How do we check? You see how we have the partial derivative right here? And you have to remember, the mixed partial have to be equal in order to make sure that they came from the same function. So let's go ahead and think about it like this. This is possibly the partial of f with respect to x. 
And this right here is possible the, the partial of f with respect to y. And what we have to do is we check if we do the partial because we have to do the mixed partial so we will do this right here with respect to y so we have this and then let's see we have negative sine x times y and then plus sine x minus cosine x we would like to see if this right here is equal to the partial of this with respect to x and here we have cosine x if they are the same then that means they came from the same function and we can integrate the way that I'm about to show you of course expect to do integration when we are doing calculus differential equation anyway here we are going to talk about in the y world so all the x's are just constants so this right here is y to the first power so if we differentiate this we will just get negative sine x and that's it on the right hand side okay there's no y one not it's just the derivative with respect to x of cosine x and we get negative sine x as well so it checks they are equal meaning that this is indeed an exact differential equation very very nice and we can proceed and the reason i talk about those ideas is because we will pick one side and then we will integrate with respect to whatever that variable was and then we can do something else you will see which side is easier let's start with this because it's smaller you can do it either way here we have partial of f with respect to y that's equal to cosine of x and of course we will integrate both sides but it was with respect to y so we will be looking at the y world first on the left hand side we get capital F and remember capital F is a function with two variables x and y and on the right hand side we are in the y world so cosine x is considered to be a constant therefore we just get cosine x times y that's the function part remember we have to add a constant but in the y world a function in terms of x is considered a constant so we will have to add let's say f of little x is a function in terms of just x now how do we continue though we have used this part already so we better think about how we can utilize that part this part represents the partial of f with respect to x so we will have to look at this and then do the partial with respect to x on the left hand side we'll just get the partial of f with respect to x and this right here take the derivative with respect to x this is the constant so we first get negative sine x and then times that constant y because we're in the x world and then the partial derivative with respect to x and this is the function in terms of x so we will have to add f prime of x and now check this out this matches with that so that means this better match with that because right here we are setting this equal to negative sine x times y and then we have that plus sine x minus cosine x so with that being said we know they have to be equal to each other so we can say f prime of x is equal to sine x minus cosine x and then from here we can just integrate regularly <laughs> with respect to x though and we can see that f of x is equal to the integral of sine is negative cosine x and the integral of that is negative sine x and you do not need to put on a plus c here because i will just put on a plus c for the final answer and remember for the final answer it will be in the form of f of x comma y equals a constant f of x comma y well we know the first part is that so let's write down cosine x times y and then we have the little f of x which is this so we have the minus cosine x minus sine x if you put on plus c right here earlier then you put on plus c right here and you make that equal to c and of course you will just label this as c1 and this as c2 and you combine the constants it's just another constant but you can just write on the function part here and call that to be c and finally we utilize this initial condition okay so we have cosine of 
pi over 4 times y is 2 and then minus cosine of pi over 4 minus cosine of pi over 4 and that's equal to c and let's see how that is alright so this is 1 over square root of 2 times 2 and then minus 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2 is equal to c c is equal to 0 because this is 2 over square root of 2 yeah and then c is equal to 0 so now we can say c is equal to 0 and then we can move this to the other side and then divide everybody by cosine x so we will get y equals this positive cosine x and then minus to the other side becomes plus and of course divide this by cosine x and likewise divide this by cosine x and you guys know the answer ladies and gentlemen the answer is y equals 1 plus tangent x <laughs> all right we have a similar looking differential equation and let's probably do the same thing Let's check for exactness. So I will label this as partial of f with respect to x, and I'll label this as partial of f with respect to y, and we'll check the mixed partial. Meaning that we will check if the partial with respect to y of this, namely negative y plus 1 minus cotangent x. If this right here is the same as the partial with respect to x of that, then we can proceed like how we did it earlier but unfortunately when we take the derivative of this with respect to y we get negative 1 the rest are just constants and when we differentiate this we get negative cosecant square x so unfortunately this differential equation is not exact oh no but almost because some of you guys might notice if you write cotangent x as cosine x over sine x, then we have an equation with fractions and you can multiply everybody by sine x. And in fact, if you do that, you will get back to the equation that we got earlier and can solve it because we've solved it already. So who in the world divide everybody by sine x? Yes, the person was me. Because I want to talk about how to solve an almost exact differential equation. Usually for this kind of equations, they are very hard. But hopefully you are instructors can make these kind of questions a little bit more fair. I will demonstrate the usual strategies. Usually we have two special integrating factors for this kind of form. I will write it down for you guys. I'm going to call this just a capital M, right? So M is a function of X and Y. And then right here, we multiply that by DX. And then we add it with N and XY, and then multiply by DY. And Let's say this right here is almost exact. Almost exact. I did have a proof of the formula already, so you guys could like, you guys can check out the proof. But these are the results. Hopefully, we can have a special integrating factor that's just with x. In that case, we will have to test out, we have to work out mu of x meaning the special integrating factor in terms of just x. And the formula for that is e raised to the integral power. And then here we do m sub y, meaning you look at this right here, and you do the partial derivative with respect to y, minus n sub x, meaning you look at this and then do the derivative with respect to x. Not yet. Divided by n, which is just whatever that is. And then you see, we have mu of x. So this right here will be dx. Work that out. If this right here is in terms of just x, then we are in luck because we can multiply everybody by that expression and then we can finish it. Or the other one is, what if we have a special integrating factor that's in terms of just y? Then in that case, the integrating factor is mu of x, mu of y, and that will be equal to e to the integral power and it's kind of like reversed. You have n sub x minus m sub y divided by m, and then in the y world. Well, you know the deal, it will be this one, because as I said, I just divide the previous equation by sine x. But I would like to work this out for you guys. Now, let's see. Well, let, let's see. 
Then let me work out this for you guys first, and then I'll show you guys it doesn't work. I think that's more fair for us to do. All right, that's it. E is E, integral is integral. N sub x, we look at this right here is our N, then differentiate that with respect to x. So we get negative cos secant square x minus m sub y. So we look at this and differentiate that in terms of y. So we just get negative 1. And then divide everybody by m. That's that crazy part. And we see that it doesn't work because we have negative y plus 1 minus cotangent x. And there's no way for this and that to be cancelled, so unfortunately, yeah, we do not have a special integrating factor in terms of y. So let's see, hopefully this works. So, e integral m sub y, look at this and differentiate that with respect to y, so we have negative 1, minus n sub x, look at this and differentiate that with respect to x, so we get negative Call C can square x. And guess what? We are going to divide it by n, which is just cotangent x. <laughs> Everything's in terms of x. Yes. So this will be equal to e to the integral of, well, let's just do this on the side. So let's see. We will have negative 1 plus cos can square is just the same as 1 over sine square x over cotangent is the same as cosine x over sine x. And I would like to multiply the top and bottom by sine square x. Sine square x. So this times that give us negative sine square x plus 1 over, well, this and that cancel, so we have sine x cosine x. But on the top, this right here is what? It's actually just 1 minus, cos 1 minus sine square x, which is cosine square x. So this and that cancel. In fact, we just end up with cosine x over sine x, which is cotangent x. <laughs> so we just have integrate cotangent x. Yeah, pretty crazy. I wonder why, but like, it looks so nice, huh? Anyway, though, integral of cotangent x is ln absolute value of Sine x. So this right here is e to the ln absolute value of sine x. And again, don't worry about the plus c. And better yet, this and that cancel and just get rid of the absolute value. Use the plus d version. So ladies and gentlemen, we can use mu of x being equal to sine x. So this means we are going to look at the original differential equation and then we'll multiply everybody by sine x. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So multiply this by sine x. We will see that this times that, we first have negative sine x times y, and then we will have plus sine x. Next, this times negative cotangent. Cotangent is cosine x over sine x. So we get negative cosine x. And then this right here is with dx. Then this times that is cosine x. Yes, so we add cosine x times dy. And of course, this times that is equal to zero. And of course, we also have the initial condition y of negative pi over 4 is equal to zero. And you know it, solve it like how we did it earlier with this initial condition. Let me tell you, we will still end up with the answer y equals 1 plus tangent x. Ah, so cool. Six differential equations, they all have the same answer. 1 plus tangent x. And you might be wondering, how in the world did I come with all this? I can tell you, I'm like super, super happy and super, super proud when I found out I was able to do that. And I'm going to make a video for my Patreon and also my channel members, like how I got this idea. You guys can also think about it on your own. But yeah, yeah. And if you are a differential equation teacher, feel free to use these questions <laughs> on, on your tests or on your quizzes and let me know how your students like it.